Hello and welcome back to the game room. You know what I love? Video games. You know what I love talking about? Games. And it seems like a lot of people these days who cover games seem to hate them. Or at least the people who play them. Well that's not me and that's not the 2150 of you beautiful people checking out this video here today. Well for today's video I've been wanting to talk about video game adaptations for quite some time. So yes we're not talking about games themselves but we're talking about movies and TV series that are based on games. And then because the internet just loves ranking I'm going to give them a tier list or I'm going to do a tier list as well talking about these various different movies and TV shows. So if that sounds interesting to you let's check it out. There's a lot of games out there, some of which you've never even heard of. That's where I come in. My name's Luke. I've been playing games since the age of two, and I have no life. This is my game. Now it's funny, one of the truths of gaming has always been games based on movies are terrible. Well, the flip side has been true for a long time as well. Most movies that adapt video games are awful. Though recently I will say at least television adaptations have been getting better, but some of them not so much. But let's run through them. Let's start with one that I actually covered last year that I was genuinely surprised was such a good adaptation. And that comes down to there really is not much source material anyways, but Twisted Metal now you notice I'm going to be using the games as reference because I don't have a lot of these on physical media as, like I said, they tend to be terrible. But the Twisted Metal show, which thankfully has gotten a season two, did not get nearly enough credit for what it did. It respected the source material in that it really presented characters like Sweet Tooth in an interesting way. It brought in things like Roadkill and all the other different, uh, the, the truck, I got Dark Side I think it's called, like it had... It, it had clever ways of doing it while still modernizing it some ways. Well, episode 4 is a little much at times. But in a 10 episode series, setting up a season 2 where the actual tournament is. So it gave us a universe where Twisted Metal could be around. And it really, it, it was a solid example of how you can interpret, uh, adapt a game. Like, especially one that doesn't have much of a story to begin with. And it was this a, a good sign, because like I say, a lot of adaptations are genuinely terrible. And this was one where, yes, they created Anthony Mackie's character, but then he kind of became Roadkill, a character that they introduced, turned out, I think Silence was her name or something like that. She turned out to be one of the best characters in the whole damn thing. It's fun, it's tongue-in-cheek, it, it captures the essence of the game. And in a, in a television show where it's hard to do a death match with a bunch of cars, when they finally give you that payoff, in the season finale and Sweet Tooth's hair is caught on fire, his bald head is caught on fire. Like yes, you suspend disbelief, but it is just a lot of fun. And hopefully the second season is not exclusive to Peacock because I feel like that's a reason why a lot of people didn't watch the show. Uh, but definitely worth taking a look at. If it ever comes out on physical media, I'll probably buy it. Now it's not the best show in the world, but once again, like I'm saying, as far as game adaptations go, we are starved for quality. So if I was going to give it a tier ranking, I really liked it. It is not that great, but when I'm generous of rankings and when we compare it to some of the other stuff, I'm probably still going to give it an A or a B. Let's, let's give it an A. I may drop it down, but that's where we're starting. Now here's one that I was genuinely surprised got a an adaptation, and it was Star in the Rock. It had a, a white gorilla instead of a, a, a brown one like it does in the game, but that actually kind of made it kind of cool, and that was Rampage. A really, a really ridiculous thing to come out when it did. I think this came out in like 2019, 2020, fairly recent, or within the last 10 years, and just a, a dumb monster movie. It does have Lizzie, it has Ralph, it has George, the big ape, and it, it's surprisingly got a lot of heart. Not a great movie per se, but if you like dumb action movies with dumb monsters, you know, and, and Godzilla Minus One hadn't come out yet, it's a solid movie. Uh, probably if I was gonna give it a ranking, I'd say it's a B tier, maybe C tier, but I'm gonna give it a B as I tend to be a little bit more generous, and it was entertaining. It's The Rock being The Rock. If you like The Rock, you like the movie. If you don't like his antics, then maybe not. It's kind of like San Andreas 2, but now you have giant monsters. 
And I just found it entertaining. They even have some nice Easter eggs like the rat character uh, from the, the World Tour games. He makes a brief cameo. And it was just, it was fun for me. Rampage was the first game I ever played. So to see it get a adaptation that wasn't complete garbage was pretty nice to see. Now here's one, unfortunately, had so much promise, but it really, at least the first iterations of it just never lived up to it. And that was the Tomb Raider movie, specifically the one that came out with Angelina Jolie as Lara Croft. And at the time, it really, like, Lara Croft was the hottest video game character bar none. Like, the, really the most prominent female character. Super hot, super cool. It was basically Indiana Jones, but you could play as Indiana Jones, and you were a badass British lady. And when they cast Angelina Jolie as it, it seemed perfect. Like, oh my god, there's no woman that looks like that, but dang, if Angelina Jolie is not close to it. But I honestly don't remember anything about the movie. And they made a sequel too, and I almost want to say I've seen both of them. And I really can't tell you anything about both of them. They were very forgettable, not very entertaining, and uh, quickly forgotten. So, I mean, I I still think it's not a complete F tier, but I'm going to give it D tier. as That's what that movie was, other than just Angelina Jolie being perfect for the role. That was about all that was right with those movies. Uh, and I have not seen the remake of it. I, I really kind of fell off Tomb Raider after Tomb Raider 3, so I didn't play any of the Rise of the Tomb Raiders or anything of that. Now that now she's no longer a Tomb Raider, she's a truth seeker, so I don't know how that's going to pan out. But yeah, Tomb Raider, that one, that, like that was, that's what the 90s were like. There was a lot of lackluster adaptations of games. Speaking of which, the first one that I can remember uh, outside of the Super Mario Brothers movie was one that I was exceptionally hyped for because Jean-Claude Van Damme was one of my favorite action stars. I went to Taekwondo for about seven, eight years to learn the full splits just to be like Jean-Claude. And the movie he was going to be in was Street Fighter, which was one of my favorite games at the time. Guile was one of my favorite characters and Jean-Claude was playing Guile, which is such a weird choice when you think about it. You have the most uh, stereotypical G.I. Joe, American, blonde-haired, blue-eyed guy, and then you have a dude from Brussels who can barely speak English playing Guile. And they, to their credit, they did dye his hair yellow. Nowadays, they wouldn't even care, so that was cool. And there's a lot of interesting choices in this movie, uh, making Blanca just a weird dude with green paint all over him. Uh, but Raul Julia as M. Bison is incredible. Chun Li's really good. The actors they have for Ken and Ryu are solid. E Honda. Uh, T-Hawk, you know, they had a few characters from Super Street Fighter, but I don't believe Fei Long was in it, uh, or if he was, it was just, you know, it was it was interesting, though, and everyone was in the movie, which was a really nice thing to see. You don't really see that that much in a lot of video game adaptations after these first couple ones. Uh, you know, you have them start changing things or going off into their own story, whereas with Street Fighter, what are you going to do? Uh, you're going to have a, a fighting tournament, so they couldn't, so instead they did this weird off-the-wall um, organization and bison's running and then you have the people going after him it's not a great movie don't get me wrong but in retrospect especially when you compare it to a lot of the other video game adaptations to at least the the early 2010s and beyond probably one of the better ones at least for sheer entertainment factor and still one that i really enjoy like i said though i'm a sucker for jean-claude van damme now let's talk about oh as far as the tier ranking goes yeah i know a lot of people say this movie is terrible I still like it. I'm going to give it a B. I'll give it a B tier. Uh, as far as the next movie now, ironically, these two game franchises were in rivalries, and then they had a movie rivalry. So Street Fighter came out in 94, but then the exceptional Mortal Kombat, the first one, came out in 1995. And this was the first movie I saw in the theaters by myself because I wanted to see it so many times. I saw it five times in the theaters. I remember my parents would drop me off at the theater and then pick me up when the movie was over. I was so obsessed with it. It nailed everything. The characters looked like the characters. Liu Kang, Sub-Zero, Sonya, Kano. Every, and then they even had some extra characters in there like Jax had a, had a little slot. Yeah, Johnny Cage in there. Shang Tsung was perfect. Like Everything about this movie is perfect. It was the music was exceptional the fight scenes the choreography as someone who liked early 90s action and really there aren't any big time actors in this i mean christopher lloyd as um as uh or not christopher lloyd what, what the guy is raiden what's his name i can never remember his act anyways the guy is raiden is 
except like everything about this movie is so well done uh goro even though for a big animatronic looks good i mean if this came out 10 years well as we'll see with the sequel but yeah i love this movie this is exactly how you do a video game adaptation it won because it adapted the game so unlike street fighter where street fighter refused to do a tournament this game did do a tournament or this movie did do a tournament and it nailed it it really was so good i wish the sub-zero fight was a little longer i was bummed about that but man the reptile fight is great the scorpion fight is great uh kano goes out a little bit like a bitch but he's also kind of a bitch the shang sung fight at the end with luke like everything about this movie is so well done and I loved it. And even they set up a sequel at the end of it, which uh, I was excited and hyped for. So uh, this one is still, a, this was an S tier. This movie is an absolute S tier. The greatest video, still I think it's the greatest video game thing ever made as far as put on screen from a game. And it's, it's funny, you know, I was looking on Reddit the other day and people were talking about great game adaptations and still the fact that this movie, which is not a phenomenal movie, don't get me wrong, it's not the best movie ever made. There are far better action movies, far better tournament movies, Bloodsport, way better. But the fact that this movie is still the greatest video game adaptation ever made from 1995 or we're in 2024 is a little sad. <laughs> it's a little sad. So hopefully that changes. Now, let's pivot to the other end of the spectrum. So, this disc also has the sequel Mortal Kombat Annihilation. And Mortal Kombat Annihilation takes place directly after the first movie and immediately kills Johnny Cage. <laughs> and and I think, I think it was the same actor even, or at least they, I, I don't know what happened, but yeah, they killed Johnny Cage. There's, it, it has a ton of characters. You see like Sector and Cyrax, Smoke, Rain, Melina, the, the witch chick, uh, Cabal. Like, there's so many characters in it, but it just goes by so quickly. It, it just, it throws way too many ideas at once. It's cheesy. It just doesn't have the same, like everything that worked in the first movie does not work in the second movie. The, the actor playing Raiden pieces out and they replace him with uh, another good actor, a guy who I do like, but it's just not the same, and it is awful. It is probably one of the like, one of the worst movies of a video game ever, and this is straight F tier, like all day long, straight F tier, because it also took a promising concept from the first movie and completely destroyed it. And I think that's why when we started seeing, so bear in mind, we had the, the bad Tomb Raider movie, the bad Street Fighter movie. I liked the Mortal Kombat movies, but the first one was kind of mediocre for critics. And then the second one was really panned. So then when we get to the adaptation of Resident Evil, you can then understand why the producers and the directors, instead of just adapting Resident Evil, having Barry, Chris, and Jill go through the house, instead we are introduced to this new task force and to this lady named Alice. Now, I have reservations about this with the series, but at least I'll give the Resident Evil movie franchise, well, there's like six of them, I'll give them credit for actually making an, an actual series out of what they did. Now, they did eventually bring in other characters from the games. They always disrespected them, in my opinion. Never did it well. Uh, and as far as the Resident Evil goes, almost all the adaptations tend to be horrible. But let's focus on the first movie, because that's the one I've seen. It's still a solid movie. Uh, it does have the part where they're going to the mansion. Uh, allegedly, it takes place before the events of Resident Evil 1. And it does give us one of the coolest moments in any video game movie, which is the laser trap hall, which was such a success that they actually put that in to one of the Resident Evil games. It's in Resident Evil 4. So that's pretty damn cool that that moment was so iconic in the movie that Capcom then decided to use it in the game. But it also does kind of coincide with them taking Resident Evil away from survival horror and going more into this action-based combat. And uh, the rest of the cast, kind of forgettable. I know Michelle Rodriguez is in it. Everyone dies. It's up to the last girl. And Alice tent gets like some high... It goes off the rails. Like, it is definitely not my favorite of anything. I do not like this movie that much. Other than the, the, the scene with the laser stuff, which killed my favorite character in the movie. I give it a straight C tier. Maybe that's a little too high. I don't like it. I know some people do like these movies. And I have not... Se I've seen the second one, but I don't remember anything about it. 
and the other four never seen. But who knows, if these videos do well, I probably will go back and look at some more of these video game adaptations. Now here's one that's had the biggest fall from grace of any of these, and that is the Witcher TV series. Now to be fair, the Witcher TV series is not adapting the games, it's adapting the books, but because the games adapted the books and they are using similar source material, at least they were for a time, until they decided to get, go their own way and lose all their viewership and now get canceled. Um, but yeah, the, the first season of The Witcher was very good. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I, there were some problems in there. Yes, they, they, they decided to do some interesting casting decisions, but Henry Cavill just was Geralt. Like, what, as someone who's only played Witcher 3, too, so I didn't have a lot and I didn't read the books, so just seeing such a faithful representation, somebody who was a fan of the games, too, and obviously respected what he was doing, it came through on the screen. And this is one of those things that we are kind of missing in modern entertainment, is this would happen a lot when I was a kid. It's funny, I, I heard some people talking the other day about how they don't really go and see movies unless it's a, a concept or a franchise they know. Uh, so when they hear when someone goes to see movies for actors, they're surprised. And it's funny because that's how it was when I was a kid. Like, for instance, I wanted to see the new Jean-Claude movie. I wanted to see the new Bruce Willis movie. Oh, you're telling me Denzel Washington, Christian Bale, and such and such are in this movie? Oh, this is going to be good. Like, you would go to a, con a movie to see the actors, and that would be it. Like, oh, uh, Sandra Bullock, I loved her in Speed. She's in a movie called The Net. I have no idea what that is. Let's go see it. Oh, you mean to tell me that Jim Carrey and, uh, and oh, uh, Jeff whatever, whatever, like the dumb and dumber, like, okay, I'll see it. like this. That's how you did it. You saw, and that's how franchises got created or how movie series got created. You didn't go to see true lies or you didn't go to see, um, predator. You went to see Arnold Schwarzenegger. And then because the movie was so big, they made predator too, but Arnold wasn't there. And it continued on to its own thing. So why do I get into that? Well, that's kind of what Henry, Henry Cavill did in the Witcher for me is that he made such a great impression that it's like, wow, I want to go now see him in whatever he's done before, and I want to see him in what he does in the future. And where the series did it so wrong is they, by firing him after season three, and then limiting his screen time, completely killed any interest I had in the series. Especially because it really was clearly not following anything in the games, and then hearing from people who were fans of the books saying that it wasn't really following the books. So I just got to say, as far as an adaptation goes, it went from an A tier for me down to a D tier. And I haven't even watched season three. And from what I've heard, that's a good thing. Uh, with season four, and I guess they just announced they're hoping for a season five and then it's over when they originally wanted seven seasons. Yeah, uh, another victim of, uh, you know, 2024. But hey, at least the first season is still decent enough. When they focused on the Monster of the Week stuff, it was so much better than the overarching storyline. Like, yes, we want to get to Cirilla and we want to get to the, the Wild Hunt and all that. But man, that happens in the third game. And so what? Where's, what's game ones and two? Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. But yes, that one, disappointment. Now, here's another one that contributed to a lot of bad video game adaptations. Like I said, all, I saw a lot of the ones from 94 to the mid-2000s before I stopped really going to these, or they stopped getting as much play. Uh, and one of them was the Doom movie. Now, I was not a fan of Doom. I hadn't played it. I didn't have a PC that could play it back in the 90s. But I was still familiar with it. I played Doom 64. And then, they, of course, they announced The Rock, who, back in 2005, The Rock was one of the hottest up-and-coming action stars out there and you got to understand as someone who loved Sylvester Stallone, Wesley Snipes, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Dolph Lundgren and then they all started getting older and there really wasn't anyone taking their place so when The Rock pivoted to Hollywood and started becoming a badass and doing these movies it was like okay all right I can get behind this this guy's got charisma I watched wrestling I I'll get behind him but then finding out that he wasn't real, and then when Doom came out, I didn't see it. It got horrible reviews. My dad didn't want to see it. And then I found out that he wasn't actually the star. It was a guy named Carl Urban, who I love Carl Urban now, but at the time, I didn't know who the hell he was. And I just heard the movie was bad. I heard it was bad. Uh, the Rock was the bad guy or dies early. So I didn't watch it for years. I eventually rented it from Blockbuster back before Blockbuster went out of business, back when they were doing the uh, unlimited rentals a month for, a, for like a flat fee. So one of those times I picked up Doom and it was very bad. 
It, there's no way it has nothing to do with the game <laughs> it's really about these guys in in an like it doesn't get doom until the, maybe the last 20 minutes which they do have a very very cool section where they do a first person view with the gun going through the hallways blowing up the demons like that that right there is s tier scene but the movie itself is still bad it's probably d tier maybe even f tier i don't know i think only Annihilation so far has been F tier, but this is still a very bad movie. But for that scene alone, it keeps it from being F tier. And it's just not good. And I guess they've done another Doom movie since then that's even worse. But I digress. Alright, here's an interesting one. So I was unaware that Final Fantasy VII had such an afterlife. <laughs> no pun intended. After the first game came out... Um, yeah, I didn't know about Crisis Core and Dirge of Service and all these other things. But for the Advent Children movie, which I guess it's been a long time since I've seen it, but I think it takes place after the original Final Fantasy VII, which at the time I thought was novel. I didn't realize that happened all the damn time, where they were doing stuff all the damn time in that universe. But they really got it right. Now, it is a CG movie. It's not a live-action one. That's kind of where I first started that was the first one we really started pivoting away from always just doing straight live action but the characters looked right they seemed right it's a decent enough movie it's very entertaining it wasn't too long and i don't remember much about it but i do remember really enjoying it so i'll probably give it an a tier yeah a tier for that movie i think that one that one handles it's not really an adaptation it's a continuation but i just wanted to mention it here because so much of that and like it's it's still in the Final Fantasy VII universe, even though it's more or less a sequel to the events. Now, here's the one that kind of sparked me doing this today anyways, and that is the new Fallout series. Now, I have not played Fallout 1 or 2. I have not played New Vegas. I have not played Fallout Tactics, which is another game people forget about. And then, I, I guess, Bethesda bought the game, uh, the the franchise and they came out with fallout 3 fallout 4 fallout 76 and there's a big debate going on right now between the fallout community about this new fallout television show because from what i've heard it pretty much destroys everything that's being set up in fallout 1 2 and new vegas and then it really leans into kind of the zaniness that i'm familiar with having seen the posters and the advertising and marketing for the games I will say, as someone who's a big fan of video games, but not a person who knows Fallout all that much, I played Fallout 3 for maybe about two hours, didn't enjoy it and put it down. I am enjoying the show so far. I'm, you know, as I am a father who works 40 hours a week, has a wife and kid, and can't just watch all eight hours the moment they drop. Like, it's hard enough for me to find time to play games, let alone watch. I mean, this is where, yeah, I, I get the binge model, but I do kind of do like... If it came out an hour a week, I'd be able to follow it and be, take place in the discussion for it. But now I'm I'm only halfway through season one, and already I've had things spoiled for me, which you know it's gonna happen. But yeah, as far as the the series goes, I enjoy the the kind of the the call outs to the game. So like the bullet time, I know that's something they do in in uh, Fallout Three. It has a lot of faithful references to the games as far as the way it looks the the kind of the aesthetic and also has educated me on how it is like i've seen the power armor on the covers and in magazine advertisements so to see it on the screen is always enjoyable to see it you know done in live action that's one of the things i really enjoy is it's nice seeing what you see in a game and then seeing it with real humans and real outfits on it now i don't i, I know there's a lot of divisiveness about what the show has done so I can't talk to that as someone who is not a fan of the first couple of games or played them. Because um, I know the developers of those went on to make the Wasteland games, I think. Or at least that's where the Wasteland games come in. But just as pure entertainment, it's decent. You know, it's, it's so far, I'm four episodes in, it's solid B tier. Walter Goggins, the guy who plays the ghoul, is incredible. I've loved him since he was on The Shield. And he's always very good in anything he does. And he plays that excellent badass character the girl playing lucy is very good uh, the guy playing the dude in the power armor he's kind of i don't know i don't mind him i've heard some people say they don't like that storyline i don't really know enough about the brotherhood of steel to be annoyed by it but i can understand why if it was something i was a fan of that i would be pissed off about it them not doing it right because that was me with wheel of time so i digress although it still seems it still seems to be somewhat relevant in the universe because the bethesda fans of fallout seem to be enjoying it all right, last few coming down here. Now, this is one 
I know this isn't an adaptation, but I just want to talk about this freaking stupid Mortal Kombat VHS tape. It's got some of the worst CG I've ever seen, but at the time when this came out, I was so excited to check it out. Um, yeah, th this this stupid thing is awful. I still have it, but yeah, one of the this came out. I want to say right before the movie, right before the movie, and man, seeing Scorpion and Sub Zero fighting on that that bad CG that looks like it was made in freaking flash like oh god it's so awful uh straight f tier on that one this falls the fallout show yeah b tier that's what i'm looking at okay now we're going to talk about the super mario brothers movie that came out last year not the original one with john leguizamo i know i saw that one but i cannot for the life of me remember anything about it the movie that came out last year was decent enough i thought princess peach looked a little weird i, I, I just not like they kind of gave her like squarer jaw than usual but the actual story was just fun uh, it was really interesting seeing him do you know the smash bros call out the super mario heart call outs with the spiny shell very colorful very you know the luigi's mansion like it had a nice it had a lot of nice representations of the game story-wise eh, whatever you know it's a mario game there's not much to do with it uh the bowser with jack black fantastic the peaches song really fun the uh the live to win although and also i think they used a good representation of the music like the super mario Bros. 3 was in there mario world while still throwing in the modern songs uh for some reason um b tier not a great movie not a bad movie uh, definitely sufficient and looking forward to seeing what they do more with it and uh, coming to the last two so I'll just briefly talk about Pokemon so we're kind of talking about the TV show and then the first movie so the first movie was the one with Mewtwo that came out I, it says it came out in 98 but I could swear we didn't get it here in the States until a little bit later as as it always happens with these things because they had to be dubbed and it's just it, it was one of those things where I probably was at 12, I felt a little too, 12 and 14 in like the year 2000, I felt older older than I should be watching these, but they were fun, they represented the game well enough, uh, Charizard had a nice arc in there, so th they were decent, they were decent companion pieces with the game, I never really, like, it was hard to know where it was going to start and where it was going to end. And I really don't remember there ever being a payoff. Even with the movie, uh, I think the movie was decent enough. But yeah, that one, that, that's like a B tier. And then lastly, lastly, we're going to talk about Netflix Castlevania, the first season, which is more or less a retelling of Castlevania 3. And then with some elements from the, I believe, the Ari of Sorrow or, or some of the other ones with the, the two uh, Dracula characters, uh, like the Minion characters. First two seasons, excellent. First two seasons, all absolutely a tier really good uh really nice seeing the way they introduced trevor and uh sophie and bill not now they cut out grant which was a little bit of a bummer but ev having everyone come together at the end of season one uh meeting alucard going after dracula and then in season two taking down dracula really good all excellent storytelling as someone who is you know i'm familiar with the games but i'm, I'm not super deep lore nerd having them remove certain things wasn't that big a deal to me and i haven't seen nocturne yet but then seasons three four and five definitely they they don't they don't ruin it but it does take the series down probably to a b tier as they're just not as good um you know they're still enjoyable enough but it, it definitely like season three they're stuck at that church area with that weird mind monster and then seasons four and five you're dealing with the like they're trying to resurrect dracula or you have the daughters of dracula or whoever those other vampires were and it just it always feels that way where after it's like oh i thought this was the castlevania series and then you get this larger monster things and i don't know it's got kind of made it less enjoyable but still all in all great adaptation and like i said it's funny the the television adaptations tend to be better but there's still ones i haven't seen that i wanted to see like i want to see the last of us still i, I don't want to see halo and i don't want to see <laughs> uncharted and max main but who knows if, if you guys like this we'll do a part two but that is what you get for this week guys um, as a reminder, I have memberships now. I have a Patreon. Uh, please, uh, your support means the world to me. Or just comment, like, subscribe. Uh, yeah, this is this has been great. We're halfway to 2200, another 50, and we'll get to a new landmark. Let's see how hard we can push this year. Can we get to 3,000 by the end of December? I, I, I would not have expected to be over 2,000 at this point. So yet again, thank you all so much. Uh, it's been so nice getting a hold of you. Take care.